Well, it was a seven year long project based in southern Indiana, and it came with controversy and major costs. Marble Hill Nuclear Power Plant is now known as the most expensive nuclear construction ever abandoned. Ultimately, it cost $2.5 billion. Tonight, the WHAS 11 Vault takes us back to 1975, where we explore the short lived life of Marble Hill. Public Service Indiana announced plans for a nuclear power plant at Marble Hill in early 1975. By 1978, construction was underway near Madison, Indiana, but the project quickly drew pushback. Local uh -huh. anti-nuclear groups staging demonstrations near the site. Who will save us from the wasteland? The people in the valley don't like what they're doing and that there is opposition. Demonstrators simulated a nuclear plant disaster laying down in front of PSI headquarters. And Public Service Indiana was prepared for the visit by those demonstrators today. Security forces were alerted all the way from the local level through the state police riot squad. The clear opposition, only one obstacle facing continued construction at Marble Hill. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission is now investigating whether or not 170 improper repairs were made deliberately. Workers inside the plant reported faulty repair jobs and dangerous concrete work. Inspectors began around the clock surveillance at the site to improve practices. When we were allowed to tour Marble Hill two weeks ago, we saw a huge honeycomb that was being repaired. An engineer at the University of Louisville says that honeycombing is extremely dangerous, especially in nuclear power plants. After a year and a half delay, inspectors said construction could safely resume. But as it advanced, so did the facility's financial problems and public concern. Two, four, six, eight, we don't want to radiate. Several Hell hundred no, demonstrators marched through the southern Indiana countryside. This is something I don't agree with and the only option I've been given right now is civil disobedience. Nuclear power is dangerous to all living creatures and their natural environment. They wanted an immediate halt to construction on the plant, which was still years from the expected completion date. So, armed with ladders, the protesters spread out. Leaders designated 80 people to climb over the fences. Once inside, they dropped to their knees and planted small peach trees. It was a symbolic move, as the property was a former peach orchard. Then, they began walking toward the plant, not getting far before sheriff's deputies caught up to the crew. Police said that day they arrested 89 people with little resistance. Y'all please come with me. Yes, Two years later, construction came to a screeching halt again. This time, a safety inspector flagging electrical work. At this point, the project's completion cost was up to $6 billion, more than four times the original estimate. That's when the governor stepped in, creating a task force to study the future plans. And in 1983, that group readied its report right before Christmas. It is its recommendation that the Marble Hill Nuclear Power Facility presently being constructed by Public Service Company of Indiana, not be completed. The task force ultimately decided the construction cost was too high and the power not really needed. The PSI Board of Directors will meet next month to consider the task force recommendation and decide whether to shut down or look for an alternative form of financing to keep construction going. But before the end of the year, the builder laid off more than 5,000 workers and ordered work to stop at Marble Hill. Hundreds have already pulled up stakes in search of another job in another town. The local newspaper, Madison Courier, offered free job wanted ads and said more than 100 workers took them up on it. It was the end of the Marble Hill era, though it would be many, many years before the impact subsided and Marble Hill was just a memory. What was built on that property sat untouched for about 20 years before demolition started in 2008. Since then, most Marble Hill structures have been torn down and scraped away. Remember, every Sunday night right here on WHAS 11, the Vault team, which includes editors Troy Whitaker and Joe Federley, are digging through our extensive video archives to revisit the history of Kentuckiana.